I've seen levitation of steel, steel ball bearings, glass, where they will levitate. Unbelievable. I've seen electricity go right into the objects and a million pieces just fly apart. In fact, using only 75 watts of energy, enough for a small light bulb, Hutchison made a 60-pound cannonball rise off the table. It would also fuse dissimilar materials, heat metal but not burn the wood it sat on, shatter metal as well as change its crystalline structure. This was something to write home about. Beginning of 1980, experimenting with all the electromagnetics and uh, electrostatic equipments I had at the time, I started to notice some very, very unusual effects, such as a room being filled, filled up very quickly with multicolored lights, steel bars sitting on wood and not causing any fires, metal turning to jelly, things levitating and jumping off to the ceiling, or simply go up, hover, and then fall back down. Dubbed by some as the poltergeist machine, there is no one machine, just a lot of old army surplus gear, randomly tuned by John. No one knows how it works. John has apparently figured out the right combination of radio waves and electrical energy to create the effect. If it could be proven, its impact would be huge. You'd have to rewrite most of the science textbooks, especially the part about... An example of this kind of random event happened in 1989 when a visiting Vancouver news crew was setting up at John's lab to film the Hutchison effect. The target area was that yellow crate with the metal objects. But to everyone's shock, a sponge in the back of the room took off into the air and then fell back down. John didn't actually see it and was genuinely surprised. Like that, it went up and hit the ceiling one second, maybe two seconds, and then came down. No. Well, some time ago I was doing some testing and got into some big trouble after I levitated a toy UFO and some other objects. Apparently John's experiments were lifting objects in nearby homes and the neighbors called the police. The police came full bore in here with engineers, inspectors. They photographed all the equipments very carefully it's almost like if you called in a cleaning cleaning crew they didn't touch anything it's like they made everything look neater for some strange reason it seems like someone in the shadows still cares what our hero is up to frustrated by authorities and lack of recognition John has been spending time developing his new project batteries that last forever based on the somewhat bizarre zero-point energy theory Followers of this theory believe that all physical matter floats in a sea of energy, which if collected and converted into electrical power, could more than meet all the world's demand for energy. I feel everything has a life force to it, because I tend to visualize that atoms are a whole universe, and when they're combining one atom to make millions, if not trillions of them, you have a piece of metal, perhaps. Every time you run your hand across a piece of metal, you're taking off several million atoms at a time. To demonstrate how energy is everywhere, John uses rocks from his neighborhood and in two hours makes a zero-point battery strong enough to power a pen light. I make sure it bonds. Almost one half electron volt. This is better than a conventional battery simply because it never runs down. So with these things, they could last approximately as long as minerals last, up to maybe a thousand years, unknown. Realizing his batteries could help solve the world's energy crisis, the Japanese have embraced John and funded him to build his bigger crystal-based models. I got orders from Japan and sponsorship for me to make more of them. So the money would come through into my bank account, and indeed I made units that are actually in Hiroshima City. While various zero-point energy devices were funded by the Japanese, so far none have taken off on a mass scale. John Hutchison is probably the very visual proponent of the whole kind of zero-point energy movement. Zero-point energy devices could revolutionize the planet. If you can build a zero-point energy reactor about the size of your microwave oven, 
put it in the back of your house somewhere. You run your house. You don't need to you run all its electricity needs. You don't need to pull anything off the national grid. Well, if you put that into the third world, you're going to revolutionize the third world. That is as much a threat to some people as it is a benefit. And as far as the Hutchison effect goes, I'm rather disturbed that the U.S. government and aerospace corporations has it. Do the concerns of it being used for an evil force by the military-industrial complex disturbs me quite a bit. I like to see it used for the helping of nature because uh, there's so much pollution going on with nature. Mankind tends to want to fight each other all the time with wars, whereas Mother Nature rolls on with great energy and power. It's absolutely essential for the world and survival of the world that we get off petrochemicals. Uh, failure to do so it really threatens our national survival. What I like about John is that he doesn't compromise. He doesn't compromise his appearance. He doesn't compromise his lifestyle. What he does is pretty unconventional. So, um, you know, good on him. I, I'm, I'm all for that. And uh, I wouldn't want him to change. He's fine just the way he is. Whether building batteries or levitating objects, John Hutchison is an eccentric enigma. Of course, virtually no mainstream scientists take John or his invention seriously. But then, only a little over a hundred years ago, people believed it was impossible to send a radio wave across the Atlantic. Now just imagine if this backyard scientist really has discovered a primal force of nature that could transform our world. I am only taken seriously by the military scientists. The academic scientists really don't know what to make of me. Well, to say a lot of other people too don't know what to make of me. I'm just a different person and I'm kind of happy with myself. I don't want to try and change myself. <laughs>